Well, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Greg Michalowski from ForexLive.com. Also, I'm the author of a book called Attacking Currency Trends. Now, what I'm going to talk about in this Forex education video is not about attacking a currency trend. I'm going to be talking about attacking a currency non-trend. What do I mean by that? Well, what do we know about the markets? Well, the market's either trending or they're non-trending, right? Either they're trending to the upside, trending to the downside, or going sideways in a non-trending slash corrective fashion. And so we as traders have to be able to understand how to um, anticipate and see a trending market and also how to anticipate and see and trade a non-trending market. So that's going to be the focus on this Forex educational video. And I'm going to look at the dollar versus yen on the hourly chart because what do we know about this currency pair? Well, it's non-trending. The market's been non-trending over the last five or six trading days with a trading range going from about 108.21 or 22 to 109.45, about 125 pips wide. And in this non-trending market, the market's moved to the upside. It's moved to the downside. It's moved uh, back to the upside. It's moved back to the downside. And it's gotten even more choppy through here with smaller uh, uh, swings up and down in the market, isn't it? So what do we know about non-trending markets just by this price action? They're choppy. The market moves higher and lower, higher and lower, and higher and lower. So that's one of the main characteristics of a non-trending market that I want you to be aware of. Another characteristic of a non-trending market is there tends to be a ceiling and there tends to be a floor. And oftentimes the market will trade in between the ceiling and the floor. Now there are times when the market may break a little to the upside and fail, or it might break to the downside and fail. In this case, we never got down there, but it could go to the downside and, and break and fail. And that's okay. In, in this type of market where the market is kind of non-trending in a non-trending trading range and you get a failure like this, look to get back in on the short side if it fails to the top side. This failure says something about the market. It's saying that the market cannot sustain a further move to the upside, so sell it. So sell it. So if you were to go long right here because the market broke outside the trading range, which is a normal thing to do, I want you to make sure that you get out of that trade at least right there. And if you can get short, look for the rotation back to the downside as well. It's often a profitable trade. But generally speaking, non-trending markets will trade within the trading range until that point where the market decides that it's time to break out and either trend to the upside or break out and trend to the downside. So how do you recognize that the market might be non-trending and anticipate a non-trending market? Well, there's one other thing that I like to tell traders about uh, trending markets and non-trending markets, and that is that trending markets transition to non-trending markets and non-trending markets transition to trending markets. In this chart, what do we see through here? We see the market trending to the upside. And that trend to the upside, what does it do? It finds some sellers near the high price right here. And that causes the market to break this trend line, this trend line which had a number of tests along that line. And when the trend line is broken, does that suggest that the trend might be over? That the trend might be transitioning to a non-trend? The answer is yes. Now do we know for a fact that the trend is over at that point? Not really. But we can also look for other reasons to think that perhaps this might be the end of the trend. And uh, I'm going to take, take us to the four hour chart. I'm going to look at a, this market from a different perspective. In this perspective, I'm going to take a look at this move from the high to the low. And I'm going to outline this 61.8% retracement. And it comes in at the 109.459 level. Let's call it 109.46. Now our high price that we just looked at on the hourly chart, it was trending up toward that 46 level. In fact, we got up to a high price of 109.36. So can you imagine that traders were leaning against the 61.8% retracement, using that as a risk defining level where they can define risk and limit risk against that level. So traders could sell here, put a stop here, and if the market goes above that, risk this small amount for the potential to make more than that amount on a corrective move to the downside if the market is indeed reached its peak and we can anticipate 
a non-trending a non-trending uh, consolidation market through here and the answer is yeah traders would do that all day long and so not only did we have the market break the trend line off the hourly chart we are also running into resistance against this key level against the 61.8 percent retracement level and the market was utilizing that level as a resistance level a level to lean against on the upside when we start to look toward anticipating the trend moving to a non-trend it means that we anticipate a peak is being made and if we have more than one reason to anticipate a peak is made we can start to anticipate that the market may start to non-trend now I say the word may because we really don't know what the market is going to do on a corrective move to the downside after all the market could hit this peak right here and trend all the way back down to the bottom right here in which case we have a trend to the upside and a trend move to the downside so this is not a non-trending market at that point this is more of a trending market but uh, what we do know is that if the market should fall near support level that that keeps the trend and the non-trend market intact we have the the makings of a non-trending market so what do I mean by that well let's take a look at where we might expect the dollar yen to have gone gone to on a normal correction of this trend move to the top side and there are a couple of levels that I find uh, of significance here the first is these lows through here I always look for uh, lows that uh, correspond with with corrective moves especially in a trending market and so when the market was moving up here where did we find support first right here this is the first support low that the market found a support against and then the market moved higher and what was the next lowest low right here what's the significance of these two lows makes a double bottom so whenever you have a double bottom this level right here actually was a launching pad for the next move to the upside the next trend move to the upside so it's going to be an important level important level for uh, this move to the upside and also important level on any sort of corrective move I would expect that buyers would lean against that level because they leaned against it right here another thing in play in this trend move to the upside is the retracement so if you were to measure the move to the upside from this low to this high where does the 38.2 percent retracement come in 108.24 is that near our low levels right here you bet it's right on top of that so not only do we have our double bottom right here we also have the 38.2 percent retracement so on a corrective move to the downside I would anticipate that there might be support buyers or there should be support buyers against this double bottom against this 38.2 percent retracement and if it could hold that level that would suggest that this market is in a non-trending market and so we have now an extreme extreme at the top and an extreme at the bottom and that helps to define our trading in a non-trending market in a non-trending market the best way to trade those markets is to lean against extremes and if you can find the extremes on the uh, downside and on the top side this was an extreme this is an extreme on the downside against these lows right here and this was an extreme here you want to lean against those levels you want to lean against support lean against resistance and why do you do that because in between in between those extremes there's a lot of chop there's a lot of up and down action there's a lot of up and down action on a macro basis and there's a lot of up and down action in the in the, the just the bars to the upside and the downside looking at this last uh, day and a half of trading um, it's almost like every other bar was a different color why because the market's chopping around the market doesn't know which way it wants to go and so we don't want to get in that barroom fight because that only leads to anxiety it leads to increased fear and no one trades well when they have increased fear when they have the market chopping around in, in random fashion it's not a good time to trade but at the extremes at the extremes we have the opportunity to 
define our risk and limit our risk, and either we're going to be um, all, uh, wrong by a little and lose a little, or we have the potential to the market to rotate, to rotate, to rotate uh, either to the downside or back to the upside. And those are the trades that we want to get on and follow in a non-trending market as far as we can. Now, because the market is non-trending, another thing that I try to do when I trade non-trending markets is don't fall in love with the market. Fall in like with the market. What I mean by that is we as traders cannot become married to a position. If we were to sell near the extreme level right through here with a stop uh, uh, above the, uh, the extreme right through here, um, we don't want to hold this position in anticipation that we're going to go all the way through and all the way down to the bottom. That's not a, a smart way to do it. What we have to anticipate is that the market is going to chop around, okay? Because that's what a non-trending market does. It chops around. And so instead of anticipating a trend and the trend is going to continue, we have to anticipate where the trend might end quickly and take our profits when we can. So as an example, if we were on some sort of move to the downside and we approach this trend line through here at this point right here, are we surprised that we found buyers against this trend line through here? And the answer is no. Why? Because they're just happy to be able to ride this move to the downside and find support at this level right here. Does it matter that they don't that the market doesn't go down to the lower extreme right here and they buy at the low? No. We have to just like the market. We don't want to fall in love with the market because the market can rotate quickly to the upside just as fast as it went to the downside. So be sure that in a, if you're trading a non-trending market to take your profits. Don't fall in love with the market, fall in like with the market. The other thing that I want to bring out as far as trading non-trending markets is uh, at some point the market is going to break out of its non-trending trading range. And that is the opposite of trending markets transition to non-trending markets. Non-trending markets transition to trending markets. So where might the market break out? Well, it might break out right here or it might break out on a move down here. This is outside of the non-trending trading range. And we would anticipate if the market were to move to the upside and move outside of this range, it should go higher. And if it moves to the downside and breaks out of that range, it should go lower. Anyway, it can go anyway in a non-trending market. We don't really know which way the market is going to break. So be flexible in, in which way the market's going to break and just listen to what the market has to say. So that about concludes uh, my thoughts about non-trending markets and how to trade them. If you like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up. If you don't like this video, feel free to click the thumbs down. Also, feel free to post a comment. And if you like these videos and want to be on our email list, click the blue box to, down below this post and put in your email address. That will get you on our email list and we'll be happy to send you free videos, free educational videos as they become available. My name is Greg Michalowski, author of Attacking Currency Trends, talking about attacking currency non-trends. I hope you like the video. Bye-bye and good fortune with your trading.